right, so it is uh, nine minutes after six o'clock. This is a meeting of the Public Service Committee, November 19th. Uh, accept the motion to take uh, item agenda uh, number one off the off the uh, table. So moved. Move. Thank you. Um, this is the agenda number one is the appointment of Kelly Curran to the library board. Um, we were just recently contacted by our administrative assistant that uh, Miss Curran can't make the meeting tonight, and that that's the end of that. We will show the table for our next meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, the next order of business is item two. Uh, accept the motion to take off the table. I'll move. Uh, it, this is the appointment of Jerome Ezaw to the Historical Commission. I have before me a letter from uh, Jer Jerry Ezaw uh, to the mayor, uh, and I'll read this into the record. This letter is to inform you of my resignation from the Historical Commission. I am afraid I just can't fit this into my busy family and work life at this time. It was such an honor to be appointed to the commission, and I truly wish I had time to devote to it. I will remain available in any way I can. I thank you for this opportunity, and I apologize for any inconvenience. Sincerely, Jerry Ezald. This was received on November 6th. I make a motion to Reese. recommend leave to withdraw per the appointee's wish. Second. All in favor? Aye. Um, take a motion, accept the motion to take off the table. Uh, item number three. So moved. So moved. Uh, item number three is uh, an order that the Parks and Rec assess the needs at every park and discuss these issues and solutions. Um, I was contacted by Terry Sheffer from the Parks Direct Department that requested more time on this order. I told her that our intentions would be to have a meeting in December and she said that she would have all that information available to us uh, at that time. Make a motion to table uh, that uh, order until um, December. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, take a mo I accept the motion to take item number four off the table. So I'll move. Uh, item number four is the Park and Rec to s consider installing a water park at Rowan Park. Um, I have an email um, from Terry Shepard again uh, it's, and I'll read it for the record. It says, a few weeks ago, this is dated November 9th, 2015, from Terry Shepard. Just a few weeks ago, Mr. Doug Knotts, president of Premier Park and Play, met with myself, Mr. Tuig, and yourself at Mayor Field. I would have to assume yourself would be Kevin Jordan. He stopped in the office last Friday with a Premier plan for play constructures and a water spray. I clarified a few things with him. He will return with a final plan within the next few weeks with specific dollars amount. Mr. Knotts toured Rowan Park too. His recommendation, should a water park be installed, would be to put it where the ground garden is now. I concur with his recommendation. I did not ask him for a layout, but I certainly can. He did tell me that a water spray could be installed slash operational for approximately eighty to $85,000. If you are, are okay with the location and dollar amount, I will ask for a layout slash design. I would love to present the designs. They should be ready the first week of December. So, I mean, I, I, I think that, again, you know, we'll table it. And when she comes okay. in to talk about the, 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 the parks, maybe we can get a little bit deeper into this. Yeah, I'd be not table that, uh, that item also till December. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, accept the motion to take item number six off the table. So moved. I'm sorry, item five. Five. Uh, the city clerk present a plan to ensure the publications of any changes or revision, revisions of ordinances. I have a letter to sit, d dated December 19th, 2015. Um, dear Chairman Brestahan and members of the Public Service Committee, please accept my sincere apologies for not being able to attend tonight's public service meeting to discuss the orders pertaining to my office. Below are the order. Agenda number five, the city clerk present a plan to ensure the publication of any changes or revisions of ordinances on, online for the public. Currently, I am awaiting a quote from Muni Code to codify all outstanding ordinances. The city ordinances have not been codified since June 2013. Once I receive the quote and once free cash is available, I will be asking for a free cash transfer to pay for the service. That's uh... <laughs> 
believe that would be um, complied with? Well, the, no? <coughs> the, the problem, if I could, Mr. Yeah, Chairman, of course. the problem is, is the mayor has been against Uni Unico doing this uh, this work. It was supposedly being done in-house, but it's mm -hmm. behind, from right. what I understand, it's behind two or three years now. And I don't know if they resolved that. So if, if the mayor doesn't agree to the free cash, then the cork won't be able to update the uh, the code itself and won't be able to uh, to publish it. So maybe we should table it just for one more meeting to see if it's been resolved. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, take a motion to accept uh, item number six off the table. So moved. Item number six is that the city council with the city clerk review of the city's policies for notification before violations are sent to court. The order, if I could, as the previous order, uh, is a little bit more in depth. This one is not more in depth. I apologize. Uh, this is uh, introduced by City Councilor Rebecca Lisi. Uh, it was tabled twice, uh, but I do have a, another correspondence from the City Clerk again, uh, dated November 19th. The City Clerk's office sends three notices for dog license renewals before issuing a ticket. Violations must be paid within 21 days before sending to court. Once a 21-day period is over, the animal control officer takes the tickets to court. Um, I have I, I I did I did send the the maker of this order, and I and I and I spoke to her husband today about the whether or not the the, the Gmail or the Volt Lisi email, which one was the appropriate one, um, and uh, I, I didn't hear about from either of those uh, about that. Um, I I believe the gist of it was that. Um, that there was concerns about, uh, you know, if the if their policy of sending out notices was was appropriate, uh, and, and neither the the orders in great depth or the, or the answer. Um, so I mean, uh, you know, I, I I'm not about I, I don't I don't I, I never enjoy giving orders leave to withdraw, uh, but I I just think that this this order has been before us. I mean, this, if we table it, this will be the third time we table it. This was filed in April 1st, 2014, so it's over a year old. Well, we, we have a response from the city clerk. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I just make, make a motion that the order's been complied with. I'll second that. All, right. All in favor? Aye. All right. Uh, the, uh, take a, accept the motion to take item number seven off the table. So move. Second. Uh, item 7 reads that the City Council with the City Clerk consider adopting a policy that allows dog owners to pay the license fee several years in advance. Um, again, I have another response to this order uh, dated November 19th from the City Clerk's office saying that we, do cur we do currently do not have the software that would allow us to track this. Who's the, the maker of this order? Councilor Lisi. Um, and I'll read her her exact order, which was filed on April 1st, 2014, reads that the city clerk can consider adopting a policy that allows dog owners, owners to pay their license fees for several years in advance. For example, the duration of the rabies vaccine, which is every three years. This could cut down an administrative cost to the city as well as narrow, narrow the possibility for violations to occur. It was tabled twice um, since it was actually filed. I remember this coming up, and the only thing I concerned was is something happens to the dog, or they move out, or the dog goes somewhere else, the dog passes away, and then how do they? They're paid up the head. How do they get the money? I mean, I don't think the city's going to be in the you know business of you know sending the money back. Um, that's why I, I think I talked to, to the city clerk on that issue. So um, it's just a tough, uh, not just a. The software, but I just think it's a difficult thing for the city to get into paying things in advance. I don't know if anybody else feels about that. I, I think it might help out the city, but I, I see no advantage to the dog owners. Right. And I think per the per the uh, city clerk's response that I'd make a motion the order's been complied with. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Councilor Bartley has joined us. Thank you. Uh, accept the motion uh, to take item number eight off the table. So moved. 
Second. Item eight reads that the building department come before the city council to inform us of all citations issued between January 2015 and August 2015, August 31st. This is an order filed on September 1st by Councilor Anthony Soto, who I anticipated uh, being here. Um, I did have the pleasure of speaking to the building uh, commissioner both via email as well as um, in person, and, I, and I'll read both of these. Uh, and yesterday, uh, he emailed me the following. I'll, I'll, I'll dispatch with the pleasantries of the email and get right to it. For the sake of clarity, the only thing I would identify as a citation is something that I would write a monetary fine slash ticket for. If that is what is being sought, then it is easy. Between January 1st today and today, the department has only written two citations, both for 107 Meadowbrook for the continued use as a landscape company in a residential zone. If the order is more broad and the maker is looking for notices to correct, notices of violation, code violation orders, law notices, cease and desist orders, etc., then that will take a lot of work to figure out. Our department has gone to 95% digital and paperless systems, so there is really no tracking system for a period of time. Rather, we have a digital quote-unquote file cabinet that contains the entire comprehensive history of every single parcel of land within its folder. This includes all past citations from the department, which we had scanned <clears throat> and archived. When something is looked into, citation in quotes issued, and then corrected, it is closed. All of the documents associated that are not already digital, such as the small green certified mail cards, are scanned and placed into the digital archives for future reference. So at this point, I am unsure of the best way to collect the more broad category within the period of time requested. I just ran a scan of the properties of our records, and after 50 minutes, we currently have within our building record archive 52 gigabytes of information comprised of 53,840 files within 55,827 folders. Less struggling with my terrible memory to pick up, pick out the last eight months of closed cases from the 11,000 parcels, I could look into having the G Holyo Gas and Electric assist in a search using specific date ranges to see what was entered. As an alternative to attempting all of this searching, I can also go to the meeting with a work laptop and project the records into a screen for any property requested instantly. And he says thank you and apologize. He also then, again today after our discussion, in regards to item number eight, the building department come before the city of council to inform us all of the citations issued between January and August 2015. I offer that there has been two citations issued during this period. They both are for 107 Meadowbrook. Aside from these citations, we have numerous types of correspondences that others may consider a quote-unquote citation. Since the other order does not clarify what types exactly, I would ask that further explanation be provided to our office to work with. Um, Councilor McGivern? At, at this point in time, unless we have uh, additional information from the maker of the order, Councilor Soto, I think the response is that there's been two citations. The building uh, commissioner has noted the, the two citations to one property and explain the ability to look at any properties, you know, just by giving him more specifics. It sounds like this is more of a general order to review what was going on. Um, and I think at this point, I would just make a motion the order is complied with. We can always refer it back to committee if necessary. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. the motion to take item nine off the table. So moved. Second. Item nine reads, introduced by Councilor Bartley, Gordon Alexander, Gladys Abro Martinez, and Peter Tallman on September 15th, that the City Council develop and publish a good neighborhood handbook that includes information to help the public better access its government. It should include, at a minimum, information concerning licenses, ordinances, services, and contacts. The handbook should be developed in committee with each department providing input and then adapt, adopted by the city council. We should set a goal of producing this handbook by spring of 2016. It should be the city's goal to provide an update every two years. Received and referred to the public service committee, a copy to the DPW, the law department, the mayor, the chamber of commerce, and the police department. Um, just, just Take off the table for discussion. Second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Um, I have a
have no, I know we have Counselor Bartley here and Counselor Tom and obviously that, that co-signed this or, or authored the order. I have no correspondences from any department. Counselor Bartley? Okay, well, uh, th that's, I guess that's not a shock. So I I'll have to, um, I'll do my best to reach every, every department. Uh, I'll just send an email to everybody, every department head. So, uh, and the real reason I'm down here, uh, gentlemen, is because I, th this is a template upon which this is, uh, this is based. And so I'm gonna, it's been in my desk. I'll, I'll yeah, Pete, you wanna yeah, just, yeah. just take? Put it with our. Yeah, just, just put it with the, with the committee stuff. So that way it'll be, it'll be officially received. Um, so, so what happened here, it, it, and you know, take, take, Take some time to you know thumb, thumb through it, but it, this was given to me by uh, Glenn Sexton, and he he always provides the neighborhood watch aspect of my uh, uh, the monthly monthly ward three meetings, and uh, geez he, he came he, he brought in this this booklet and I I was I was I was wowed by it it was really impressive and you know there's nothing political in there but there's just a lot of common numbers that, that folks need and and the hope is that that we can come up with one here in Holyoke and, and I don't mean just you know I me mean, Joe you remember those those uh, those magnets that uh, Jack Wellhead yeah. world famous he, he, Pete you remember that oh, world, yeah. world famous for police fire ambulance but, I, I mean, poison yeah, control I don't know I don't think Jack invented it but I mean Mr. Wallen but 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 boy those are popular as can be and um, th this takes it a, a st another step further I did want to let the committee know that uh, Glenn mentioned to me, you know, he didn't, well, I mean, he, he made the offer. He said that the Hamden County Sheriff's Department would, would pick up whatever printing needs we had once we, once we pulled together. And I thought that was a pretty nice gesture. So, um, so there's really, other than a time, there's really no other, I mean, big cost to the city. I mean, it's, it's from what I can tell, if someone we can just, <coughs> um, distribute them in a cost-efficient way, maybe with a, other mailings that we send out or leave copies here or, or distribute them as best we can. Um, so so I, I think once you look to that, we'll, you'll generate some ideas and committee here. Uh, and I hope maybe in, a, maybe in a month or two, Danny, we could, we could take this up again. Uh, I, I assure you I will I'll copy every member of this committee as well as Kevin, and, and we'll, <coughs> we'll, we'll have these department has come up with um, you know some some thoughts some thoughts on it Councilor Tom yeah I, I think that's I, I signed on to that because I thought that was a great idea because I'm how many times people ask you stuff or they come to City Hall and they don't know where to go uh, looking for a phone number people still asking me today with the trash collection that people up in, in my neighborhood put the blue bins out the wrong week you know and so there's, there's great, so there's many a, things there's a great idea Pete and I, I don't even yeah. know if that's in that book yeah there was something about the oh, collections oh, it's got the maps oh, okay so that's which is great I mean um, you know dog uh, control I mean I, I looked through that it's it's uh, I don't I mean, know if it has every, to be in depth as that but it has to be some basic stuff about you know every good neighbor. real estate agent in the city would love to have one of those when they when they give it to their the, the buyers, yeah, buyers and I mean, stuff yeah Oped I mean Marcos would like to have something like that um, and then all the all the great events we have in Holyoke. Oh, you could put put in there, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's they're just there there's there's so many, and, and they're you know year after year. But nice to have a little calendar with uh, highlighting those. So I'm yeah. hopeful that the chamber will. will uh, chamber the big uh, big one to start with, I think, because they have a lot of that information already in the booklets that they send us. But there's other things that aren't in there. You know, that's a lot of business are in there, but they have the basic. You know things at the population, the wards, the counselors, uh, the, all the phone numbers for the different departments. But this book goes, a little, like you said, goes a little bit further, and it's got some really good information here that the average person, you know, even people that've been here their whole life, don't know the answer. You know, could look in that book and say, "Oh, this is how I got a contact about getting a building permit." You know, this is all I got to do. I was going to call this number and and do it. You know, so I think that's a, that's a great thing. It might take a little bit of time, but um, say the spring of 2016, I think. Uh, is a realistic goal if we get a hold of some of these department heads and and to, to work on that you know yeah so i mean i i, I just want, i want you guys to just kind of under i mean and as holyoke done this before probably we may have i mean springfield service like didn't invent it um this handbook but it's it's something that's uh that really caught my eye and and you know i got i got excited about it after, after i kind of read it read through it so yeah. hopefully you guys will and then uh we'll get some department heads to cooperate 
Council McGinnon? Uh, first, I'd just like to thank Councilor Bartley for his attendance this evening as the only maker of an order besides the people on the committee that showed up, and we appreciate that, oh. Oh, gotcha. as always. Yeah. And second, I, from the get-go, I thought this was a good idea. David, I noticed um, there's a partnership here, too, with the community policing unit in Springfield. Our chief has, has really picked up community policing in Hoyoke, and they, they use the... Uh, that large uh, box band that they have, but they have people assigned to it now. Um, maybe they would be the lead for this if, if they have the appropriate person or if, you know, we found someone in City Hall that could, you know, be the, uh, the lead uh, uh, maker of the booklet itself, but with their help in terms of input it might make sense. You, you really need somebody, Joel, to that can here in City Hall to sort of grab the yeah. reins. Yeah. And, and run with it, and, and and since it's come from our our wing of the government, I don't want to throw it to the mayor's office to to do this. I mean, I mean maybe Ryan could help help out. Yeah, but but I'm thinking all the if everybody sort of at least throw, throw me the information. You know, Ryan can maybe maybe help me, uh, and I, and I'll pitch in as far as compiling stuff. I'm I'm happy to do it. It's uh, um, but I, I'd rather have you know, Ryan help out or. or I don't know, maybe, maybe some other department will take the lead. I agree. It's a great idea, and hope we can pull it off. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm hoping too. So, go with that. Um, Danny, just so I'm – when we – so that, that order would have gone to every department head. I was – when we put it out. I put this agenda together uh, Thursday of last week. And uh, Thursday morning, I believe I sent it off. I think I, if you look through your emails, I sent it kind of to everybody, all the, anybody that, all the city councilors, as well as Ryan, as well as the DPW director, the Parks and Rec director. I did not send it to the police in, in, in good faith. I wouldn't, you know, I, would, I don't want to throw anybody, you know, say I did something that I didn't do, but I sent it all out, I sent it all out to everybody that pertinent to that except for the police department. Um, and if I'm not mistaken, I also CC the mayor's office as well. Okay, I'll, so I, I got response and just so I because I, I know I know the Parks and Rec contacted me, the building department contacted me, and the city clerk contacted me. On the whole, I sent out the rough like, not the whole order, but this is the gist of the order. If this is your order and you you know you're not going to show up, you want me to do something with it, blah blah blah. If this if you're a department head and you can't make it, contact me and we can you know. But um, I didn't hear from anyone with respect to this order. Did it say where it goes to? Did you have the fire department also? No, the fire department no. wasn't on there. It was um, it was the pub, uh, uh, the DPW, which I sent it to. The law department, I didn't. The mayor, I didn't. The chamber of commerce, <clears throat> I wouldn't. I, you know, I think that would be to our administrative assistant. And the police department, I didn't. Um, but I did. I did send out the email with the rough draft of my intended agenda a week ago, um, Thursday. So that Friday it could go out maybe and have the weekend and people could peruse it, uh, and I, I I don't know when who and when people got it, but now R R Ryan's downstairs, right? Doing yeah. his, doing his, okay. So so with that good neighbor handbook in the jacket, maybe Ryan could make a couple of copies, and I'll ask Ryan to do that, and then um, Ryan, if you're listening, um, <laughs> you know, make make a few copies. Of it and and distribute those to the department heads so the, so they get a little idea about idea what, where, where we're headed with this. And, and from I, I can remember when Kathy Anderson was in the uh, economic development office, there was I don't know this was done when I was in the department something of this nature was drafted. I don't know if that it was set like this, but I do remember the Good Neighborhood Handbook. And uh, you know I don't think it went into detail or had calendars, but it certainly said like you know if you want to open up a restaurant, call the board of health. If you want to build a house, call the building department. So Kathy Anderson from the Chamber of Commerce, I think, would be a very large resource in that in that in that effort to get that uh, accomplished. All right, so I'll, I'll get on top of that uh, tomorrow morning, and 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 we'll start the ball rolling a little bit better. And, and maybe uh, once I get some start getting some feedback, uh, we can schedule another. Absolutely, I'm, I'm, I'd like to have a meeting in December before you know, just to kind of clean out the jacket on a couple things. The Parks and Rec, so they can be here for December, maybe. You know, second weekend or something. Oh, and, and while we're on the topic, ju just, just so especially Councilor, Councilor uh, Joe knows, uh, you're, you're never gonna, <laughs> you're never gonna believe this. So we, this, this is a good neighbor handbook. So, um, so uh, we've had two applicants come before the DGR committee, and n now they've been two big fails. So the one we just approved last night or, or Tuesday night yeah, yeah, yeah. for for the Everett's. Okay, it, I don't even know. I mean, 
I'm, I'm going to plead ignorance on this, but they were building a garage, as you know. I, I mean, non-conforming use. Well, apparently, there's a separate one for non-conforming structure, which makes a lot of sense. If I had known that, I would have said, you, you've got the wrong... So since we passed it, CARES advised me, and I've now started the process again, they have to reapply the whole ball of wax uh, uh, for the for non-conforming structure. So is that Bob? Yeah, Bob. Bob but, yeah. So you know, wouldn't wouldn't that have been nice if, if we if yeah, we yeah. had the had the roadmap in there? Right. So yes, they're going to have to. Uh, but I got approval from Kara. We can we can fast track this, which is so that's the good news for so by the second meeting in December, um, we'll have the you know because we're having DGR on the ninth. And we're having a, a second meeting in December when we set the tax rate. That'll be on that'll be on our agenda for for the non-conforming structure. Second of all, and this this one I I love even. Is this the same topic? The the, the, the garage one. The garage one, yeah. Okay, it's a, number two is the same no. issue. No, no, different one. If I could just yeah. I, I, so I, what, I, what I guess I, I I would have to probably get a little bit more into zoning, but I mean, from my understanding, the guy was building a garage that was already there. No, I don't. I don't believe there wasn't a garage there. I believe there, was there. One there. There, there, there is one there now. Both right. There, yeah. So I, I, I get. I just. I, I, it's unfortunate because, as all of us in, in common sense world knows, that digging a shovel when you have six inches of frost, if that is the case, come December sixteenth. I mean, it's just unfortunate. You know. I mean, now, yeah. he, if I'm not mistaken, it was in the paper as well. So. Oh yes, because yeah. a special permit. So we 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 had a public hearing, Brez. Yeah. So Danny. So. Um, <laughs> you've got to, you've got to advertise. Right. Yeah. So, so I've asked uh, uh, Madam Clerk to uh, waive the application fee, and I've asked President Jordan to uh, have the City Council budget pick up the advertising costs. So it's not done, because otherwise, not only do they spend more time, they're going to just more money. I mean, more money. That's yeah. <laughs> to build a garage that was already there. Yeah. 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 And th this is the good neighborhood part that, that kills me. It, it, the garage has been there for 80 years, which means it predates zoning, which means right. it predates setbacks. It's three feet into a, into a buffer setback. That's all it is. If a person comes in and says, what do I do? Someone in the city has to instruct them. Right. Never mind a handbook. There's got, the, oh. planning, the planning director was sitting here that evening, you know, and, we, and we asked him, you know, not asked him, but we pointed to him that, you know, is this you know, in order? And everybody thought, I know it's confusing. Non-conforming is always confusing, but everybody thought it was in order. But you think it would have been picked up before that? And I've said this over and over again. Yeah. If we're going to do these special permits in DGR, we need a lawyer with us. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. you're 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 definitely right on somebody advising them and and you know give them the right application. Yeah. Right. What would have been a beginning, but I mean it's reviewed by how many departments, and so. So who picked it up that it, there was a mistake? The law department. Um. The night of the meeting, yep. I got an email from the building commissioner with a letter attached. Now, I did my best to read it. It looked, I read through the letter. I, it looked like things were okay, but the next morning, he sent me another email saying, well, not so much, because what you passed last night is worthless. And then I confirmed it with Kara. I said, Kara, could you review? Yes, she reviewed. Got to start the process all over again. So that that's one. Second of all, um, so it gets even better, uh, we, had, we had the folks out at Mount... Tom, uh, po uh, power plant power looking plant. to um, you know tear down that cell tower. I mean, we had them. You know, the guys are coming up from Rhode Island or whatever they're coming from for, for this hearing, and uh, we did that process correctly, except when they were given the abutters list. They were given an incomplete abutters list, so now they need to restart. The whole process and re-advertise, and and do another mailing to all the abutters. Somehow, two two neighbors within so many feet, three hundred yeah, feet, feet, feet were, were were not were not notified. So process, and I don't even know how that was picked up. But Kara sent me that email today. There you go. That's that's, that's it. That's, that's, that's just bad. Problem. That's in, yeah. that's incredibly expensive. That that petition. So well, I mean, I, you, you feel, I mean, you know, and I know it's expensive, but I mean, I feel bad to kill it for Rhode Island, but, you know, you feel bad for the, the Hoyo Home owner who's been, you know, who's got a garage that's been there before there was zoning bulk. 
Yeah. And now, 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 now he's got to wait two weeks. So now it's like he could probably build a garage, you know, this month because it's not freezing cold out. Come, come, you know, snow time. I, I just, uh, yeah. it's just, it's not. That's a, that's a, just a disaster. Anyways, we're off track here, but I think the okay. good neighbor of the hand, handbook would have helped us. It would have. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, accept the motion to take item ten off the table. So. Item 10 reads that the City Council and Personnel Department review and update the City Auditor's job description. I have a correspondence from Bob. This is, again, this is the, the agenda I sent out. I sent it out at 3 o'clock on November 12th, Councilor Bartley, just for the, with all of these items that were on there with respect to yours and in and, and a good handbook and all that. Um, Bob Judge responded to me 25 minutes later on Thursday of last week that said the job posting for the city auditor was last revised December 2014 and it is at www.hoyoka.org uh, etc. So I believe as you suggest that this order has been complied with, with therefore I will not plan to attend the meeting unless the committee wishes to do I do so for a particular reason. I believe I sent this correspondence to the committee members um, from yeah. from Bob. So uh, Although we do have an acting auditor, I believe that the, the, the original order was was from April 2014 that it, it, it be revised. It was revised in December of 2014, eight months later. So I, I you know I would say the order has been complied with. I, I second that motion. Yeah. I in in advent two of the two days ago when the full city council um, now that the um, election is over and the Voters have determined which direction we're going as far as the financial officers are, um, for example, the treasurer being elected and so forth. I think this is very important. And everybody seemed to agree to allow the president to call a full meeting and to, uh, to do the interviews for an auditor. And the, you know, the job description should be uh, what we've been using. So I, I, I agree with the chairman's motion that's been complied with. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Um, motion to accept the motion to take item 11 off the table. So moved. Item 11 reads that the city council appoint the third assessor to be in line with the state law. The actual order, um, whereas the city has received the recommendation for the second time from the Massachusetts Department of Revenue and to be in compliance with Mass General Law Chapter 41, Section 24, as well as city ordinance 8236, okay. ordered that the city council approve a third member to the board of assessors. Um, the correspondence is from um, Tony DeLude has said that they have, they advertised for it. They received one applicant with one resume. Her name is Maureen Cronin, C-R-O-N-I-N. She is, she has all the certifications that required and she works in some capacity as an assessor uh, in the city of South, or the town of South Hadley. Um, the, the verbal conversation I had with the auditor was that Councilor Jourdain was looking to have more applicants for this post so uh, we could you know make a mo I, mean, I guess in because it's a city council appointment and I, I would defer to, to my to my senior colleagues here that um, because the city council has to appoint the <coughs> position I mean I, I, I'd be at the will of the body whether or not we accept hers and we just put it to the council or council McGiven I, I, I would suggest I, I, the, what we need to know is was there a deadline in the advertising of the position right. And if, if that deadline can be extended for a short period, that's fine. But um, if, if the deadline's gone by, then I think what we need to do is to set up an interview with, the, uh, with any applicants. And we can accept applicants at any time because as elected officials, when it comes time to vote, we can vote for anyone regardless if they were interviewed or not. It doesn't always make sense, but that's, that's the way the law reads. But I, well, I would suggest that for, for a meeting in early, uh, late November, early December, that we, we set up interviews. If there are more applicants, we welcome them. If they're not, we go forward with the person who's interested. And this would, that would be, with, that, that would be in this committee, correct? Correct. Okay. All right, so I will check with Bob uh, and Tony DeLude and let them know our intentions, and I'm hoping to have a meeting the second week in December where we can have, um, set up an interview for any interested candidates and see if that, there is a deadline on the app, on the uh, job application, or, or if it's still open and ex you know accepting applications. Make a motion at the table. So moved. Second. All, right. All in favor. Aye. All right. Well, 
Good job, Mr. Chairman. You got rid of half the agenda. I got to tell you, for why I went over for eleven orders, we got one, two, three, four, five, six. More than half was tabled because we couldn't get bodies. So you think the half full glass? Right, right. Got that's rid right. of half of these. Right. Yeah, yeah, the other five that. I got rid of. Right, yeah, it's true. And my jacket you, you, is now in. That got rid of. We acted on them. Acted on them. It's true. It's true. <laughs> We'll give this, uh, neighbor, yep. give this to uh, Ryan, yep. see if we can get some copies made up. Yep. Make a motion to adjourn if there's no further business. So, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Are you trying to have a meeting like on a... Uh... It's uh, to, yeah, yeah. No, 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 I don't mind if you do it. I just, I, I just don't, you know, because they, they might turn the cameras off and then people hear the things. Oh, okay. So, well, Take off the table to discuss it.